It's been out. No Multicultural cultural round. So a leg and a handily toss the coin. And we'll see Brisbane get to the right of screen on this overcast now. Sunday afternoon in Brisbane. Not the biggest crowd, but obviously Brisbane not playing the sort of football that packs out a stadium. Lee, the players to watch. Well, I think from uh, from Brisbane's point of view, I mean, Jonathan Brown is always the most likely. I mean, as we know, he needs a couple of goals to kick his 500th goal. But you'd think for Brisbane to beat Geelong, he probably has to get to 504. He has to kick half a dozen, you would have thought, for the Lions to be in the game. Mitch Clark will be around him. Uh, Patrick Carnesis has been a, an, interesting, uh, an interesting player. Simon Black uh, is still their main ball getter in coach. And the contested possessions... The Lions have struggled in that area, and Simon Black is their uh, is their main ball getter. We see jo Joel Selwood back in the team. That's going to certainly hope the Cats and James Potts Yadley. He'll be the anchor point of their forward line, but they'll have a lot of height around him. Umpires this afternoon: Kennedy, Bowen, and Pennell. We're underway on a Sunday in Brisbane. Rucks go at it. West the starting ruckman. Selwood immediately back into the action. Kicks inside the forward 50, and Hawkins. Back in the side this afternoon. So how about that three of the new boys, if we can put it that way? Five changes at selection, and three of them involved right there. Yes, uh, Hawkins, we know, can come off the full forward line. They've actually started Barty on the bench, who's very a very tall player. So you know, most teams like to have mostly moving running players on the bench, but Geelong are going to have a big rotation through just a couple of their mediums. Tom Hawkins, this is what he has to do. And on the mark, only about 35 metres out. Hawkins, well, an unconvincing looking kick. First it was going to miss left, finished up, but missed right. He doesn't get a whole lot of kicks, Tom Hawkins, and I must say he never looks that likely or that, that consistent with his uh, with a goal scoring. But getting the first uh, mark and kick, very helpful for his confidence. So Adcock short to McGrath, but uh, not a good result. Matthew Richardson, Richo, what do you got for us? Yeah, we know Andrew Raines has come back into the team and he's playing those tagging roles. He's got the massive job today on Joel Selwood back into the side. So we'll keep a close eye on that one as the day progresses. He's done pretty well in that role, uh, Raines, over the last couple, hasn't he? So Stokes has handballed to Corey, to Ling, and then Ling to Chapman. And then Chapman belts it back, only to set a half forward. Black's half volley. Was it high on Corey? I think it was. And make a difference on the kick out when that kick out uh, was smothered out of bounds all of a sudden the Geelong every team now sets up to lock the ball in their forward 50 from those stoppage situations uh, very hard for the Lions to clear it and ball stays in the area you get a free kick you get a shot at goal so not a big goal kicker Joel Corey he's kicked three this season he's about 45 meters out that is always just missing so the Cats with the uh, Two relatively easy shots in the first couple of minutes and a couple of behinds. Coming up two losses, the Cats, but what they did do in both those games was start quickly. First three goals against Essendon, first two against the West Coast Eagles. And then a bit of a Calypso Collapso. Black to Reigns. Now McGrath in the back pocket, not a good kick coming out. Over the top, Taylor Hunt. Was that in the back? He did pretty well, I thought. Went to the side at the last moment as he arrived. Patful was the man he took down. Michael Boss Rangers looks on. With a struggling team at the moment. And a swag of injuries. Out of defence, McKeever straight to Mackey. Mackey sends it long down towards full forward. Well done by Maguire. Going back, won the battle, took the mark. Short one comes to the pocket. Hanley. Hanley, very close to the boundary line, very close. Oh, the mark is paid. Jonathan Brown, centimetre perfect. Sure was, Dan. It was a good effort by Brownie as well. So he got a bit of an opening here, Staker. So he and Brown both injured in that first round against the Dockers. Had the last surgery, Staker, on his back. So good effort by him. Now, Pat full short kick inside. Just trying to build here with some short passes. Redden, good player, this young man, and that's a good kick. Colton Horn had given away the free kick to Corey in the back half earlier. Now, 
Bockinghorn just sets it up. Can Brown get a crack? Not quite, but he, he splits the pack. Sheldon and Hunt, and Hunt runs it over. So Brisbane are on the board. Hunt quickly to the outer side of the ground. Johnson's away. Couple of bounces. Stevie J runs to the wing. Just chips it into the path of Varco. Well done by Staker. Back on the side this afternoon. Arriving quicker than Varco. No men feet. He covered that well, Staker. Really, uh, he looked like uh, he, Varco was going to be able to run into the space, but uh, it didn't work out that way. Lewenberger knocks it down, but straight to Selwood. Runs inside the 50. Pulls it back towards the kickoff line. Podsy Adley wins the battle of strength and kicks a goal. One of the things that we know uh, Joel Selwood does extremely well is win the ball from those stoppage situations. Remember, he got the first centre bounce, that key boundary throw. And I think he's a little bit lucky, Potsy Adley. Then I, we might just see it where the ball's about to drop. He, he virtually, uh, yeah, we see Maguire going to ground because I think Potsy Adley might have got a bit of his jumper and turned it, but the umpire didn't see it. So Geelong have got that first goal on the score. He runs away, ball away from there. Well, uh, Selwood, he just, just got himself loose. I don't know whether he just had better body position, uh, but Geelong, they've peppered the goals a little bit early, got their first one. So Pods gets the 30 goals for the season. This is his first game of the Gabba. Because he got a remarkable story last year, starting so late at 28. Lewenberger, that one cut off. Corey held on to free kick. So Joel Corey with a couple of frees in the first quarter. What a good player he has been for such a long time now. In his 10th season, kicks the ball to full forward. Bodzi Adley, Maguire, good mark Maguire. So he, he's taken two contested marks. He's had some continuity over the last couple of months. Riddle with injury, Hawksley. First game for the season last week by Hawksley. Inside, they're playing a dangerous game here, Brisbane. Agcock, they open up a bit. Balkinghorn releases Stiller on the left, and they should get a goal here. Powers got it, but he quickly runs on, and it's a goal. So, end to end stuff for the Lions. Yes, with defences uh, pushing up, uh, as is the modern uh, football phenomenon, sometimes running the ball through the centre square. When, as soon as the Lions were able to take the punt, bring the ball from half back flank back into the centre square. Took a couple of richy ha or, uh, risky handballs to get it through. But you see all the Lions players in the back of the screen. they just uh, got goal side of the Geelong defenders. Percentages are you get a goal or two this way, but you don't get six or eight. Yeah, this is a good goal by Brisbane. Built up from the half back line and they got the ball over to the back. Luke Power, proven goal kicker. The forward line's got a good look about it today. With Clark coming back, it means that Carnesis all of a sudden gets the third defender. He's on Hunt and, of course, Jonathan Brown on Taylor. So their forward line looks dangerous. Preston breaks out of the centre, goes looking for Ponzi Adley, runs towards the boundary line. Ponzi Adley goes down. Maguire did well, forced the error. Staker thought he had the football, robbed of it by Ponzi Adley. Rockcliffe did nicely. McKeever gave it to Patful. Now McGrath out of defence, short one. Man waited for the ball in midfield, no time to do that. Hawksley had it punched away. Black redeems the situation, comes out for the goal scorer. That's power. Now this guy can run for a big man. Lewenberger down towards the pocket. Lovely kick. Geelong had the numbers. Black's got the footing. You can clearly tell what the Lions game plan is. Get Run the ball out of the half-back line. They're going to have to take the risk. They're going to have a risk, risk midfield turnovers because you can't really just kick the ball in uh, long to the Geelong uh, back 50. They're pretty good in the air, their defenders, even without Scarlet. So uh, they're going to play high risk, high possession, running football, the Lions. So Clark, chance to extend this early lead, steps inside the 50, kick is on the way, it's a beauty. Oh, just misses. That was nice. Sweetly timed, didn't quite come back as far as he anticipated. He did time it well, so all square here. Long ball out by Hunt. Staker underneath. Gee, did well there, Staker. Had a couple of challenges. And then Selwood along the line. Gee, no. 
actually it's interesting, you know, I mean, 10 years ago, you'd have yeah. laughed at an umpire well, was, was deliberate there, for that, There was a you? Geelong player near it, but the umpire read his mind. Said he must have been going out for the boundary. He definitely was. It was right in front of us here. Oh, oh. Clark up high. And now Enright to Bartell. And well done by Reigns at the back. So Brisbane up and about. It's very early, I know. Black's kicked to about half of the fourth pocket. Brown comes in, does well, and a boundary throw in. So well, both sides are going to have plenty of height in their forward line. You've got the three big guys in there for Geelong. Hawkins, Podge Yardley, uh, Barty at different times, and the three big guys for the Lions. So Barty, who stayed on the bench, worked out of it. Rockcliffe with a snap, or is it Sheldon? Hit the post, Sheldon. Yes, I think Geelong would have been disappointed then with the... Uh, with think Barty's effort in the ruck, Clark is actually going forward, doing the forward ruck work, and he was able to get clear access to the footy. I think Chris, Chris Scott, the look at his face, a little bit of uh, not happy. That was a fairly easy goal conceded by the Geelong defence there. Ruckman just fell out of the contest. This is a great start by Brisbane. 27 uncontested possessions to seven. They're outrunning the Cats at the moment. They're looking a little bit flat-footed at the moment. Maybe just a week in the sun might take them a little bit while to get going. Uh, like lizards, eh, on that rock. Bruce, you've got to go with your first instinct, right? It was Rockcliffe. Got the goal, eh? So, since that Potsy Adley goal, it's been 25 disposals to six. Yep. They are totaling up now. Taylor to fall forward. That was McKeever. And now Adcock. Now he carried the ball in the tackle. I think he's gone. So you heard the explanation. Chapman's a good tackler and a hard man to tackle, isn't he? It's a great combination. Oh, big fly by Pods, and he's got it. Yeah, that's the thing with Maguire as a defender. He's got the strength, and a couple of times he's about bodied Pods the Adley, but when Pods the Adley is able to get a run and a jump at the footy, it sometimes Maguire just gets dropped out that half metre or so, which allows the clear access to the footy. That... Uh, I don't know what prior opportunity he had. I'm not quite sure how you're going to dispose of it being tackled by three Geelong players, but good mark that. Hogan put the first tackle on. Chappie took the kick. So James Pozziadli going for a second goal in the opening term, and it's a goal. So the Cats draw level. Bright opening here. Yes, it is interesting when we talk about just the ways the games. The Lions have had 40 possessions, 22 kicks, 18 handballs. They're going to run, try and link up, carry the footy, break through the Geelong midfield. At the moment, Geelong have only had 20-odd possessions, uh, 40 kicks, 6 handballs. So they're, they're going to kick the ball into their forward line and give their big forwards a chance. Uh, they've got the height in there. Uh, Pod Seattle is going to be the main main target, but Vardy... Yeah, but it's going to be a great aerial contest in that uh, forward part for Geelong v the Lions. So Podsy Adley off to a bright start. 31 goals for the season now, coming up three last week. Did kick six and a half from memory earlier in the season. And immediately came off the ground before half time. Kick out of the middle by Reigns. Dunnerwood's right half forward. Taylor leads in the race, paddles it towards the boundary, I think. Initially, that was going to be his way out of that situation, but eventually controlled the football. Selwood's kick straight onto the chest of Hanley. And since you think Taylor's the best big defender in the team for Geelong, but Lonigan's got the Brown matchup. Hanley, nice kick, poking horn, fended off, then fell over. Comes to Reigns, he's in trouble. Dragged down by Selwood, in goes Black, knocked away by Barco. Gave it to Stokes to Kelly. Looping hand pass finds Bartell. Bartell for space. Podsy Adley won't be in the contest. Staker drops back, takes the mark. Plays on. Rockcliffe who got the last goal. He's at left half back. Not much on offer. Will he go all the way to Sheldon? He's trying to. Sheldon from behind. Beaten by Lonigan. Knocked it down. In right goes to Bartell. Good stuff by the Cats. Some great names, aren't they? Corey. Back to Mackey. Mackey squeezes the ball to Chapman. Adcock closed, but Chapman turned him in the end. Hawkins' handball was a little sloppy. Black and Chapman fighting for the footy. Christensen sweeps the handball out. Mackey's come forward. He'll kick a goal. You'd... No, he won't. Or will... No, he won't. He probably could have straightened up a little more, Mackey, there. He had uh, a little bit more time. Back in the team, didn't play in Perth 
Actually, they've been rotating players a lot, haven't they, oh, well, Geelong? No player has played every game for Geelong. They've had the great luxury winning their first 13 games of almost now preparing for the finals two months out. I was with Richo before the game talking to his former doctor, Chris Bradshaw, and we talked about that and how they're yeah. trying to manage the team all the way through to September. Garnesis sent it up towards half forward. Taylor's over the football. Banfield is over him. And they have a ball up. As Bruce said, a bright start. Cats up by just a point. 15 to 14. One down by West. Christensen can't get out. Tackled by two. Ball was jarred out. McGrath goes to Black. Kicks with the right boot. Looking for Brown and finding him. Well, no, Brown spilt the mark. It wasn't paid. Sheldon gave it to Banfield. Banfield bounces it down towards the pocket. He goes through for a minor score. Gee, I reckon Polking would have been upset. I mean, he was so free then, and Banfield yeah, didn't use him. I think so. He tends to have a little bit of goal fever, Banfield, when he gets the open goals in front of him. So, we were talking about one redhead, and a more famous one in Ling gets the ball to Varco, and then back to Vardy. He started, as Lee told us, on the interchange today. Now, Bartels kicks a good one. Johnson couldn't quite hold it. So you, you heard the umpire, Johnson milking a free kick and then the advantage. Brown's gone into the back half. No, no, that was McCoy. Yeah, Brown is in the back half. I was right first time. So Hanley trying to break the tackle. Johnson breaks through. And he's run a long, long way. Hooks the ball back and Hawkins slips away from Maguire. Vardy, I should say. Gee, they're going to have to mark the ball in there, Geelong, because that's the way they've set up. And... Uh, Barty's, uh, uh, Hawkins already had one shot. Barty actually fell into this uh, uh, this mark well. But they've got to be able to kick, uh, I reckon, seven or eight goals out of their big forwards today because they've set up with uh, two or three in there for the majority of the game. It's four goals, four from set shots, Barty, this year. This is a tough one. This would be a terrific kick. And it was always to the near side. I think Vardy and Hawkins have only played the one match in the same team mm. this year. So it's a different mix. Otten's obviously a suspended. They've brought West in, we know. But haven't seen much of Vardy and Hawkins together, have we? Yeah, no, no. Well, mostly it's been one of those guys has been the second ruck spare forwards to Otten's. So you hear the lines. They'll be trying to run the ball out. That's the way they've set the game up. <laughs> Still a look anything but convincing there. Now Adcock. Patful, he's at right half back. Now they can move. South Australian drives it long. Carnesa stretches and is paid the mark. Crab 150. But because he paid the mark, he can't pay advantage. Redden was off with the footy. Carnesa grew up playing soccer. Comes in short to power. Power. Across the ground. McGrath. Stiller again, involved moments ago. Finds Black, barely the 15. Black goes out wide. Clark comes on the lead from the opposite direction. Hawksley. We, we know that Geelong spent the week in, uh, in Queensland in between their game in Perth last Friday night. And you, know, you wonder how you're going to come off that preparation this way. I think it's going to be good from long term. But how's it going to be that next game after an unusual week away from home? So Hawksley, not renowned as a goal scorer, does what he's not renowned for, puts it through. Yes, I think uh, it'll be a simple question of whether, with the high possession style that Brisbane are going to embark on to try and beat Geelong today, can they maintain possession? How, at the moment, Geelong haven't been able to get the ball back off them all that well. And therefore, the Lions have got the uh, got the goal lead and uh, continue Geelong's problem of uh, seven times they've lost the first quarter this year. Well, this is a good interchange that happened. Hawksley just came off the bench there and kicked the goal. He came on for Rockcliffe, who was playing on the wing, having a great battle with Jimmy Bartell. Jimmy Bartell just got lost there in uh, that matchup in the interchange, and Rock, uh, Hawksley gets the goal for it. That's his first goal to Hawksley ever, so 24th game. Actually, they played a bit like Hawthorne there, I reckon, in Brisbane. They're playing the Hawthorne style of game at the moment. That pinpoint passing, you've got to be so accurate, is such a high risk. We saw that work very well for the... I'm poked. Forward. And um, 
It'll be a boundary throw in. That's fine there, Tom. No, kick, no, no kick the prison. No I, I got thrown there because we have, we've worked out who's, <laughs> whose headphones are right on now, haven't we, Dead? <laughs> here's, here's Pat Full out wide. Out wide again. And uh, down low was power. Well played. Range to Rockcliffe. Now, right. Polking Horn. It's this sort of dangerous game they're playing, but if he gets it here, Carnesis is on again. Adcock drives it down towards Carnesis. Carnesis right half forward, has it bounce. That was ambitious, runs to 50, sets it up towards full forward. Clark goes back and takes the mark five metres out. So, Brisbane making a good fist of this at the moment. Well, simple, Geelong have chose to play the three big tall, big, big tall forward today. If the four big forwards don't mark it, then they're really slow to chase on the way out, and they're just getting found out at this point. Narrowly missed a goal earlier. Narrowly gets a goal this time. Put a long way right to left. Well, I mentioned earlier in the game, because Geelong won the first 13 games, they've lost their last couple, but they're kind of preparing for the long term. And I reckon if you weren't preparing for the long term, even now you'd be thinking, Motlop's our substitute. Do we get him on? for one of our big guys because they just look like they got one big guy too many uh, to chase out the Brisbane runners. That's a great uh, set build up here from the Brisbane Lions. Mitch Clark, the beneficiary, a nice mark over the back. Just a little bit too much height for Andrew Mackey. That comes about because Harry Taylor had to have a rest off on the bench. Lonigan then had to go on to Jonathan Brown. And Hi, that means Mackey goes well. to Clark, gets the mismatch. So Ling getting forward, Podsy, Andy Stokes gone. Play on call. So Maguire got a little poke in the eye, I think. Hanley's run right. forward. This is the wing they've been able to get free on too, Lee, isn't oh, it? Well, Geelong have been very, very slow on the chase at this point out of their forward 50. Kinesis did well there. He created the uh, contest and then Sheldon's little dinky pass is a beauty. And within range, Polkinghorn, he'll go all the way here. Maguire's OK now. Mitch, Harry, stay out, please. Yes, they've certainly got the fly. He might have just got the... Uh, not sure what happened to... Oh, yeah, got a kick just across, the yeah. kick across the face. So these are the goals. That are, they're vital, aren't they? I mean, you've... Yeah, they've got the ascents here. They've got the momentum. Got to make the most of it. It's a bit of a goal kicker poking on. That one won't come back, though, and a behind. So a couple of missed set shots for the Cats early on, but... Lions doing well here. They lead by a couple of goals. Here's Lonigan Hunt against the boundary. Counting down a quarter time. Vardy, access to the football, didn't take the mark. Opportunity for Lewenberger. Got it from Stiller. Goes short, finds Sheldon. Sheldon right on the 50, under pressure. Well, by playing on, he brought Ling into the equation. Ling virtually on his boot. They haven't really been con contested marks, but they take 10 marks inside 50 a game, the Lions. They've taken five already in the uh, first quarter. Obviously, Maguire with a hit to the head there, being worked on. Power sends it back inside the forward line, off hands, hitting the pack hard, Sheldon. Well done, kept it going to Brown. Chapman in the road, though, gives it to Mackey. Mackey under pressure, kicks back towards the defensive 50, reaching over the top, Lewenberger. In trouble, there was Hunt. Hogan was involved. Now an opportunity for Josh Hunt. He was the Hunt earlier. Bartell gave it to Stokes. Stokes towards half forward. Hits an errant boot. Comes to Vardy. Chopped off brilliantly. McGrath. McGrath comes away with the football. Goes to Brown. G did it well. Brown's handball. Just put reins. Not sure who was at fault there. And now there could be a huge turnover. The good tackle from Power brought Ling down, but they can still create. Stokes to Corey. Podziadli's the target. He'll hit him lace out. Yes. Gee, what a blue in the... It was, it was a turnover city, wasn't it, in the middle of the ground there. Vardy gave it back to the Lions, and then... Now, Reigns made This the slight fumble, uh, that created the opportunity for Geelong to win the ball back. And when they had that space in the middle of the ground, Podziadli was able to just fall to the ball. He was able to wait to see what Corey had to do with the footy, then create that movement into space. Because Merritt's out for the rest of the year. I mean, they're, yeah. they're missing him, aren't well, they? Well, McKeever is actually very inexperienced. Uh, big defender. Maguire, Patful, that's their big group. Stake it today. So can Pods only kick a third opening quarter goal? Yes, he can. Beautiful kick. So Pods has got three. Cats pull one back. G 
Archie. Five goals to two versus four goals to three. You, you mm. felt that a goal was on with Brisbane through the second. Well, they are. They say Brisbane have to play Russian roulette, move the ball quickly, footy. So the question is, can they maintain possession? And one of the things about Geelong, if they get a little bit of space in the middle of the ground, they normally make the right choice and the right skill execution uh, going into their forward 50. Uh, and that's uh, basically how that goal was created. Much needed goal there for the pods. He's had a good start, but we've got an issue on the interchange bench. There's Hayden Kennedy in his 496 game. I'm not sure if he's been interchanged or he's injured, but he's come off the ground, Hayden. Mm. Born in Sub. 1965. Bad decade for the Kennedys. Down goes Bartell. Advantage, advantage, oh, he took, he took the advantage. Right. Kelly, what was he thinking? Ball comes out towards, who was that? Clark. Clark got it from Black. I was watching Kelly remonstrating with the umpire. I know we've spoken about this a few times over in the telecast, but the players have to get used to it. If, the, if their teammate gets a free kick, you've got to really take your time before you play on. Play on. But then playing on, play on. is harder, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Here's Clark anyway, got the footy again, self same spot, gives it to Redden. Across it comes to McKeever. McKeever goes down towards half forward, hangs a long time in the Wait air. On. A lot of these guys down that end getting very high Wait in the on. sky. Taken by Chapman, knocked out of there. Sheldon goes to ground. That's amazing when you think about Hayden Kennedy too. He didn't look too happy there nursing that injury. I mentioned born in 65. And Richo mentioned game number 496. I'm not sure he gets the full check today, but even so, that's a lot of tweeting. And that was before tweeting was invented, so he was a man ahead of his time. Kicked out of Woods, full forward, off hands, deflected back by Taylor through for a minor score. And I guess over the years, Dennis, some of the tweets the fans have liked and some of the tweets they haven't liked. Well, I was going to say, and I thought it would be unkind, that's a lot of bad decisions. But uh, and a lot only, of only because of bulk. And in Hayden's case, yeah, you're right. A lot of good ones as yes. well. I think his left knee's gone by the look. Well, let's oh. hope he can get to 500. So Hunt's kick, he was looking for Hunt. So Hunt for Hunt, and it uh, was hunted over the line. They went hunting and couldn't find it. That's so, what it does. Well, I'm enjoying this. I don't, think the, I don't think the Cats coaching staff is at the moment because they're just not on the boil at this point. Christensen, they're on that roller coaster lead. Yeah. And the boundary throw in. Well, as I said before the game, they pick to me one extra tall player than what they should add in their 22. Now they want to get the game time into them long for long term purposes, but it's going to make them a little slow today, and it's finding them out at this early stage. So Corey has been good through the centre. Christensen running hard over energy. McGrath's been good. He was injured last week, I'm pretty sure, the week before, but he. He's had a good year, McGray. He's had a goal-kicking year. Kick six in a losing team against the Suns. Adcock told to move it on. Now they're going way, way, way back. Almost to Ireland, you'd think. Yep. To Hanley. To Stiller. Back to Hanley. Now they're him in a little bit. They, they have to keep trying to point it. But once you go one way, you've really got to keep going. Otherwise, you, know, you get hemmed in a little. Trying to create. McGrath, this is so dangerous. Still McGrath. Oh, he did Go well. Ahead. He did really well. Hanley. So this Russian roulette continues. Volkinghorn bangs it. Now, Redden has to wait, but he should mark it. And he does mark it in front of Kelly. Two hard nuts together here, Redden and Kelly. Redden having a very good season. Goes in short. That should be 50. Well, he didn't pay the mark. Clearly, Black... Took the mark, I would have thought. Belatedly knocked away. Stokes has got it now. Maybe the umpire said it didn't go 15. Stokes, well, to show how far they are off the boil, I think, see that kick. He missed everything by about 20 oh, metres. There. Here's McKeever. Since you're back, Geelong, they've lost seven of their first quarters this year, so they haven't been a team that's started well on uh, very often. McKeever, quite a bit of the football in this quarter. Bangs the big man. The alpha male out there this afternoon, Jonathan Brown. Brown, long down towards left half forward. Off hands and across the boundary line. It will be thrown in. The clock is down to 26 seconds. 
And Brisbane, one of their best terms of the season, albeit the opposition, a little bit at sea. Coming off a week of just swanning about on the Gold Coast. I'm sure they didn't see it that way, but just the way they played so far, they could well be out there in Hawaiian shirts with cameras around their neck. Opportunity for Black. Hard against the line. So much of the footy again, not his best disposal. But the clock will come to his rescue. Barco running. Siren. Quarter time on a Sunday afternoon. We like what we've seen so far. 30 plays 22. Nine-year-old playing his first game of the Gab has been the star of the opening quarter. James Pozzielli with his three, but Brisbane leader by eight points. They've had a lot of ball. They've been playing a high-risk game in the back half and creating a kick over the top. But so far, it's worked all rightly, hasn't it? Well, it has, certainly has for Brisbane. Now, Geelong, we've mentioned through the call, they've chosen to play three big guys in their forward line. pozzielli has got his three goals. That's been good, but at the moment, he looks like being really their main scorer. Vardy and Hawkins are merely about a shot each, but... Having three really big forwards means you're slow on the rebound, slow at ground level. Let's go down, speaking of ground level, to Matthew Richardson is with Jade Rawlings. Well, Jade, I reckon something you guys would like is a contested ball you're up for in that quarter. Yeah, it's something we've been down on all year and uh, we think we've massed it really well. And then once we've won it, we'll actually be able to get on the outside. And I think we're plus 20 uncontested marks at the moment, which is a real positive for us. What about big Mitch Clark? He gives your forward line a more dangerous look, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he does. We've got multiple targets in Carnesis, Brown and Clark now. And we'll get Lundberg down there at stages. So hopefully it asks a bit more of their defenders. Rainsy, good too on Selwood. Yeah, not bad. I was pretty happy with the job he's done so far. Would have been nice if he could run through and kick that ball through 50, but he's really stuck to his role. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate.